All of the paper used in Europe between the 14th and 18th century was made by hand, one sheet at a time. Until the paper machine was invented around 1800, a team of three people accomplished this work. The roles of these three artisans and those of supporting co-workers are documented in detail in 18th century French papermaking manuals. The team included the vatman who formed the sheets using a rectangular sieve-like mold, the coucher who inverted the mold and pushed it against a wet felt, leaving the fresh sheet on the felt, and the layer who removed the pressed sheets from the felts. It is an impressive fact of papermaking history that one of these three-person teams could produce 1,500 or more sheets in a day, or roughly 200 sheets of paper in an hour. A film documenting the work routine as it was still practiced at Hale Mill in England in 1976 is available on YouTube. At the University of Iowa Center for the Book Research and Production Paper Facility, we have set up workstations for a three-person team in an attempt to reach these historical production rates. The purpose of this project is to learn more about how paper was actually made as a utilitarian commodity for five centuries. More important, we hope to discover how such production rates impact the aesthetic properties of the finished paper. We are making 12 and a half by 18 inch size sheets, often called chancery. This size sheet accounted for 90% of the paper made after 1500. These paper dimensions were undoubtedly common because equipment and supplies for making smaller sheets were cheaper and expenses were a major concern for anyone wanting to establish a paper mill. In addition, the smaller sheet size was easier to work with at all stages of the paper making process, a great help when training younger workers. The historical raw material for paper was old rags made of linen, hempen, and sometimes cotton fiber. Due to the introduction of synthetic fibers, which can complicate processing, we begin with new textile quality hemp and cotton fiber in making most of our paper. The fiber, as it is drawn out, ready for spinning in the textile industry, is laid out into hanks of about 40 strands and then cross-cut into two and a half millimeter lengths on a German-made flock cutter. 10 pounds of the fiber is soaked in water and later drained and cooked in a lime solution to swell the fiber and leave it more receptive to beating. The cooked fiber is loaded into a beater where it is washed with a drum-type washer to remove excess lime and then beaten to fibrillate and macerate the fibers so they will form strong bonds with each other during sheet forming, pressing, and drying. Enough beaten fiber is added to the vat to make 50 sheets. The thicker pulp is allowed to settle lower in the vat and then drawn up as paper making continues in order to make sheets of uniform thickness. The person at the vat needs to take up just the right amount of pulp and then shake the mold so the pulp settles evenly before the excess water drains through the porous surface. From the vat, the mold goes to the coucher who transfers the freshly formed sheet to a damp felt in one continuous motion returning the empty mold to the vat. While the vat person and the coucher are at work, the layer is parting the damp paper from the felts in a previously pressed stack or post of 50 sheets. She lays the damp paper in an accumulating pile and passes the felts to the coucher. We learned two things very quickly. First, we could indeed make 100 to 200 sheets an hour, and second, 10 pounds of pulp was used up in about three hours. As of 2013, we have not actually made 1,500 or more sheets in a day, but we are now confident it is possible given enough pulp on hand. When 50 sheets are accumulated, the post goes into the press.
50 tons of pressure is applied over a three to four minute period. During this work, the vat is recharged so that when the layer goes back to work at the end of pressing, the other two workers are ready to join in making a new post of 50 sheets. At the end of the day, the accumulated stack or pack of damp paper is gradually squeezed in a screw press over a 30 minute period to expel more water. Pressed pack is then parted and separated into loose groupings or spurs of four sheets. The paper is then hung to dry in a sheet plastic enclosed area designed to slow the drying rate. Traditionally this work would have been accomplished in a loft in the upper floors of the paper mill and the humidity in the loft was controlled with sliding shutters which let in more or less air from outside. When the paper is initially hung to dry, it is flat and even, but a day or two later, after drying, all of the paper is wavy and cockled. This is avoided in much contemporary hand paper making by drying each sheet between blotters or other absorbent media under restraint. But one 10 pound beater load gives us about 350 sheets, which is too much to dry using this method. We imagined the historical work routine and wondered if perhaps the humidity given off by the damp paper coming up to the loft from today's paper making was used to humidify and soften the paper in the loft from yesterday's paper making. So we tried humidifying the drying space to simulate all the moist air that might come from the sudden arrival of a lot of damp paper. And indeed, we found that after four to five hours in a very damp space, the paper will soften enough to be stacked exchanged and then taken to the screw press for flattening. Subsequent exchanges and returns to the dry press can be used to get the paper eventually flat and dry. If the finished paper will be used in calligraphy or with other aqueous media, we size it in a warm gelatin solution. Sizing takes place in a stainless steel double boiler tray. Typically the warm gelatin is a 3% solution. The sheets are added to the solution in groups of about 12 sheets, allowed to thoroughly absorb the size and move to an accumulating stack. A felt is used to work out any air between the sheets. When all the sheets are sized, they are pressed in the screw press to expel excess gelatin solution. The warm sheets are then parted, stacked loosely, and hung to dry. Humidification and flattening follows later. Burnishing is an optional final step following gelatin sizing and is usually done with a polished agate stone like this one from India. Burnishing leaves the sheets with a much smoother feel and a shinier surface. The final step in the process is grading the sheets for thickness and quality. We're not yet satisfied with the results of this experiment. We are still perfecting the process of sheet flattening. The surface of the paper doesn't always have the active grainy surface we see in the historical sheets, and the sheet formation and overall quality is not as good as it should be. Nevertheless, the effort has already been revealing. Our respect for earlier artisans and the high production skilled work they accomplished has only deepened. Students in our papermaking classes can read about historical processes or watch a video, but actually working at each of the three VAT workstations 
brings a new level of appreciation for the craftspeople who made 1,500 or more sheets a day, probably six days a week for most of their lives. And aesthetically, we are gradually getting closer to something that looks like a quickly but professionally made utilitarian commodity. 